Hey everyone! Today we're going to look at a few of IKEA's worst products that you should never buy. Don't get me wrong, I'm a big IKEA fan. I even picked up a Swedish husband there. Hey! Fortunately, he came pre-assembled. But some IKEA items are really quite terrible, and the first one that I want to talk about are the SolarVet solar lights. We had these a few years ago, and I bought them because I thought they were just so cute. Like, what's more whimsical than little mini lanterns on your patio? First of all, these lights started to get really gross looking after being out in the rain. They got gray and grimy, and there was nothing I could do to get them clean. I guess they'd get dusty being outside and then it would rain. They're made out of white nylon, so the nylon just completely absorbed the dirty rainwater and stained them. So maybe it's best if they're used in a covered area of your patio, but the main reason why I don't recommend them is because of the actual quality of the solar lights themselves. They didn't last and they'd be on and then they'd be really dim and then they'd just die after half an hour. It was really disappointing and pretty expensive for a string of solar lights that only lasted a month, to be honest. I even tried changing the battery inside the solar panel, but they would just not hold their charge. Maybe I got a dud, but the solar vet are a pass for me, and after that experience, I probably wouldn't buy any IKEA solar lights at all. Another lighting product I would 100% never buy again are the Homo floor lamps. Valentina from House of Valentina also mentioned this one in her video about worst I care products and I have to agree. So we have three of these lights and every time I look at them I'm just like annoyed. I'm sure you're asking, so why did you buy three? Well, it's because they were cheap and at the time we just desperately needed some floor lamps. And now I find it hard to get rid of them because like they serve their purpose but I can't justify buying new lamps right now because I have a whole house that I still need to decorate. So why do I dislike them? Well, besides the fact that they're extremely fragile, like they're paper, so obviously they're delicate, but my main problem with them is that I feel like their scale is too small to really be impactful in a room. In my opinion, for a floor lamp, they're just too short. Especially if you've got high ceilings, they just seem like little dwarf lamps. But anyways, none of this even matters because they've been discontinued. They seem to have been replaced with the Vickleby, which personally I think looks even worse. I just want to say that I have never been overly impressed with IKEA's lighting selection. I always walk through the lighting section secretly hoping to turn a corner and be blown away by some amazing new light, but it never happens. There are some good ones, of course, but in general, I feel like they could do better. The LAC series. When I was extremely broke and I moved into my first apartment, I went to Ikea all excited, thinking that I could make my place look like their catalog for 20 bucks. When I got there, I quickly realized that all I could afford was LAC furniture. So for a while, my entire living room consisted of a free Lixela couch, a LAC TV unit, and a LAC coffee table. I seem to really like red accents in 2008. Oh, and there's another discontinued Ikea lamp. Anyways, for me at the time, that was really exciting and I thought it looked amazing. But I will say that because LAC is the cheapest or one of the cheapest furniture lines that IKEA carries, I feel like anything LAC just kind of gives off really temporary vibes. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with LAC, it's just that it's so incredibly basic. It's really just a hard surface made out of particle board and that's it. There's not a whole lot else going for it. And you will realize that over time and you will want to get rid of it. My advice to you is to take your money and spend it elsewhere, like at a thrift store, for example, or find a piece on Facebook Marketplace and buy a piece of furniture that is solid wood as opposed to particle board that will probably end up in a landfill. The IKEA Lint Roller. This isn't a piece of furniture, but nonetheless, something that I would never ever buy from Ikea again is their lint sticky roller thingy. It's the biggest piece of garbage. <laughs> Why? Because it's not sticky enough. You have to use like five sheets of it to get like anything off. I fell for it and I bought it because it's only like 99 cents, but trust me, just buy a better quality one that costs $3 more. You'll only have to use one sheet and it'll just be less wasteful in the end. The Listerby console table. The Listerby is definitely up there with one of my most regretted IKEA purchases. I wanted to buy the lighter version, but at the time they only had the darker one. And already there I should have been just like, okay, if they don't have what I want, then I'm not buying it. But I really needed a surface in my entryway and I just wanted to solve the problem, so I bought the dark one. As soon as we assembled it, we both instantly hated the way it looked. It looked clunky and the proportions are just weird. I don't know, maybe it's because the shelves are too thick or something. I don't know how else to describe it. It's just just clunky. It definitely does not have that airy Scandinavian furniture feel that I was hoping for. 
The other big disappointment about the table, besides the looks, is that after a while, the veneer started peeling off the top edge of the table, basically where the leg connects to the top edge. Bad, bad purchase and would not recommend. And for those of you wondering why I didn't return it, I would have loved to, but I can't return things to Ikea where I live, so I'm stuck with it. The Lang Long Lang Fall, the Lang Fagel, Lang Long Long Fiel, Long Fiel office chairs. These office chairs were a huge disappointment. I thought they looked so nice. Like, you know, when you compare these to your standard black office chair, they look great. I love them. Ponty Pants and I each bought one, and within a few hours of sitting in them, we were both like, yeah, these aren't gonna work. If you need to sit in your chair for more than an hour at a time, I would say do not buy these. I think they're way too hard and shallow. I don't think they have good lumbar support, and the armrests were just these metal bars which literally felt like they were bruising your arms after extended periods. Mine also didn't seem to recline properly, so we ended up getting rid of them not long after buying them. The Klippan couch. We rented a furnished apartment in London almost a decade ago, and this is the sofa that we had there. Even at the time, we were like, classic. They furnished the place with the crappiest sofa possible. It was bad. It was super uncomfortable, so we never spent any time on it. Plus, you can't really fit two people on it comfortably anyways. You could jazz it up with some throw pillows and probably make it look a little better, but essentially the Klippan is a super basic sofa that you can put in a space that needs a love seat that never actually needs to be sat on. IKEA launched this sofa in the 80s and they say it's still a favorite. All I know is that it's uncomfortable as heck and I do not recommend it. The wooden runen deck tiles. They're absolutely beautiful. Those tiles that you see used in most deck and patio DIY makeovers are those wood tiles. Those are the ones that we used as well and the ones that we'll be talking about right now. I will say that they completely transformed the look of our crappy plywood rental deck and we managed to lay them in like an hour or so. It was super fast. They're interlocking and it's super straightforward to lay them. But the problem with these tiles is that they're advertised by Ikea as outdoor decking, but they really do not hold up well to harsh winter weather, at least not here in Canada. So the sneaky thing about these tiles is that on the product page, it doesn't specifically say that you need to bring the tiles in to overwinter them. But on the outdoor flooring page, I did find a little blurb that says something like, when our Canadian winter season makes its return, you can easily disassemble the flooring for next year. Hmm. That sounds suspicious. Like bringing in a few outdoor cushions for the winter, I totally get, but needing to bring in your entire deck floor? I don't think so. I don't wanna have to do that every single year and neither do you. Now, personally, I did find that yes, the tiles faded and definitely needed a bit of resurfacing after being outside for one winter. It's wood, it's normal. And anyone that leaves a one-star review because they didn't realize that wood weathers if you leave it outside in the rain and snow is... That's not really fair. <laughs> But the bigger problem that I keep seeing crop up in multiple reviews about these tiles was that several people also experienced warping and lifting, which isn't cool. And when they went to try and separate the tiles to repair them, the plastic interlocking mechanism snapped and broke because I guess it had become brittle with the freezing temperatures. So my point with these tiles is that if you live in a climate that gets harsh winters, Make sure you're aware of some of the issues that people have had with them because you don't wanna be buying these thinking that they're gonna last forever with no maintenance because they won't. Or you could always just buy the artificial grass ones. I hope you enjoyed this little roundup of some of the worst IKEA products I've ever owned. Do you have any IKEA products that have really let you down? Let me know in the comments because I would love to know. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.